people do. I'm currently researching the specs for the other modules that Burgess has said he wants to check because, uh, let's face it, he's not exactly a genius. But along the ways, I found some other data that I found very interesting. As far as tech specs go, I was looking at 2020 models. Just in case, you know, maybe the car was purchased earlier in the year and it contains older technology. And if it doesn't, this is the very minimum that it can do. Obviously, later models with later technology can do more. Now, I have talked about this pedestrian detection system before, but let's presume that didn't work for some reason. Maybe it only works in the forward direction and not in the reverse direction, which I highly doubt. But let's also assume that even the automatic brake system failed as well. And then, on top of all of that, let's also assume that the Safety Connect system which also collates automatic collision data back at the Lexus server, not on board in the car, where their data retention policy ranges from 7 years on location data to 15 years on driving data to 10 years on multimedia data, 15 years on vehicle health data and 4 years on other remote data. And at the very minimum, that Karen has disconnected it all from those services, which are otherwise automatically connected. And let's just focus on the basic specs for a 2020 model LX570. From multiple sources, I was able to find out that the maximum torque for the LX570 is 403 pound feet at 3600 RPM. I was also able to find that it's got a single reverse gear with a ratio of 3.785. Now, given those specs, I decided let's ask AI to play with those numbers and tell us what it thinks about reversing at 25 miles per hour. According to Microsoft's Copilot, it says even with a reverse gear ratio of 3.785, and a maximum torque of 403 pound-feet at 3,600 RPM, the Toyota LX570 isn't designed to reverse at 25 miles per hour. The speed achievable in reverse is limited by the gear ratio and the vehicle's engineering to ensure safety and control. The reverse gear is tailored for low speed manoeuvres and attempting to reverse at such high speed would likely be unsafe and cause mechanical issues. In other words, you're probably gonna break it. Asking the same question of ChatGPT gives us the formula on how to determine if the Toyota LX570 can reverse at 25 miles per hour given those specifications. The conclusion it draws is that while it is technically capable of achieving 25 miles per hour, you'll probably break it. And just for good measure, I asked Notepad LM AI to generate a discussion based on exactly the same question. Here's how that discussion goes. Ever gone down those internet rabbit holes? You know, like, I gotta get to the bottom of this weird car fact. Oh, absolutely. It happens all the time. Well, buckle up, because today we are tackling one that honestly sounds kind of crazy at first. Okay, I'm intrigued. Hit me. Can a Toyota LX570 really hit 25 miles per hour in reverse? In reverse. Wow. Um, that's specific. I'm guessing we're going to need to like really dig into the nitty gritty here. Oh, you bet. We're talking gear ratios, engine power, the whole shebang. So to any listeners out there who think they know their cars, get ready for a wild ride. This deep dive might just change how you think about reversing. All right, you've piqued my curiosity. Where do we even start with a question like this? Okay, so the LX570 rocks a single reverse gear. Okay. Makes sense. Most cars do, right? Right. But here's where it gets interesting. That reverse gear has a ratio of 3.785. Okay. Now you're speaking my language. 
gear ratios, love them. But for our listeners who might be more familiar with, say, using reverse to, you know, actually park. Rather than win some bizarre reverse drag race. Exactly. What does that number, that 3.785, even tell us? So picture this. You're on a bike, right? You got your gears, higher gear, you're cruising, less pedaling effort. Same principle in a car. Gear ratio is all about this balance between how fast those wheels are turning, that's your speed, and the torque. That's the force making them turn in the first place. Uh, torque, the unsung hero of making a car actually move. So higher gear ratio equals more oomph, less zoom. Nailed it. And the LX570's reverse ratio, that 3.785, it's on the higher side. What's that tell us? This thing is built more for, like, carefully backing up a trailer. Yeah, low-speed, high-control situations. Not exactly built for setting land speed records in reverse. Agreed. But hold on. We can't just talk about gears in isolation, can we? Yeah. We've got engine power to consider. The weight of the vehicle itself. Oh, absolutely. It's a whole ecosystem in there. How do those factors all work together to actually determine how fast a car can go in reverse? That's the thing, isn't it? And this is where things get a bit tricky. Car manufacturers, they don't exactly publish a maximum reverse speed in their brochures. Seriously? I know, right. You'd think it'd be a standard stat. But there's a reason for that. Figuring out the actual top reverse speed, that's some serious math. More than just looking at a gear ratio, then. Oh, yeah, we're talking about factoring in everything. We've got the gear ratio, sure. Then there's engine power, measured in RPM, revolutions per minute, weight of the car, obviously. No, and let's not forget about tire size, the road surface. Exactly. Even things you wouldn't expect, like, what if the car's safety systems kick in? It's a whole puzzle, and to be honest, it's probably more trouble than it's worth for most people. Okay, so getting a precise number is a challenge. But can we at least say whether 25 mile per hour in reverse is even remotely realistic for a car? Well, this is where we have to think about how cars are actually designed, right? We sit facing forward. Visibility. It's prioritized for, you know, going forward. Right. Safety features, your airbags, stability control, all that. They're optimized for forward motion, too. Frankly, high-speed reversing just goes against the grain of everything we know about safe vehicle design. Honestly, I can barely see anything behind me just backing out of my driveway. I can't imagine doing 25. Exactly. And from a pure physics standpoint, a car at high speed in reverse, it just wants to spin out. The handling dynamics are totally different, much less stable. So not exactly a recipe for uh, a smooth ride. Let's just say it's not advisable. But, and it's a big but, it's not the whole story. There's always a catch. Always. Think of it like this. You could have all the right ingredients for a cake, but without an oven, you're not baking anything. I love that analogy. Yeah. So what are the ovens in this scenario? What else is at play here besides the gear ratio? Well, for starters, there's the engine's power. It's often way lower in reverse than it is in drive. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Right. And then on top of that, you've got all these safety features, like electronic limiters, or kind of like invisible speed bumps. So they're programmed right into the car's computer. And they basically prevent you from going too fast in reverse no matter how much you put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, it makes sense that car makers would prioritize safety, especially when you're going backwards. But what about tire size? You mentioned that earlier. I'm really curious about that. Great question. Tire size definitely impacts how much ground the car covers with each rotation of the wheels. Okay. So if you have larger tires, they could theoretically contribute to a higher speed if the engine is running at the same speed. Nice. However, realistically, it's not going to make a massive difference. You've got to keep in mind those other limiting factors, especially those safety systems we talked about. Right. Those safety systems are definitely going to be keeping things in check. So what I'm hearing is, even if that Toyota LX570 could physically hit 25 miles per hour in reverse, thanks to its gear ratio, it probably won't because of how it's designed, right? Exactly. It's really a balancing act between the mechanics of the car and how it's actually used in the real world. Right. It boils down to this. For the vast majority of drivers, reversing is about what? Parking? Maybe some tight maneuvers? Hitching a trailer? It's all about precision, control, not speed. Makes sense. Why build for something nobody really needs? Exactly. Car manufacturers, they focus on what people actually use, and that's safe, efficient forward motion. Wow. This has been, I don't know about you, but my mind is a little blown right now. No kidding. <laughs> Who knew there was so much to unpack about reversing? Seriously, it seems so simple on the surface, but there's a whole world of engineering going on behind the scenes. It really makes you appreciate all the thought that goes into even the most basic things we do with our cars. Absolutely. So listeners, next time you see an LX570, or any car really, 
Just remember, there's a whole lot going on under the hood, even when you're just backing up. And maybe take it easy on that reverse gear, eh? This has been another deep dive. Thanks for joining us.